Whoa, boy! What a show that wasn't. I'm John Retho with my review of WWE Raw. It's the go-home show before the draft. You know, where they take the furniture and rearrange it in the house. They take some pieces and move them over here. And take some other pieces and move them over here. And then they maybe, you know, change the room around a bit. But you know what it doesn't fix? The core problem that Vince McMahon cannot put on compelling television anymore. And he doesn't care. And he'd rather just collect his money and have the base ratings that he has. And I can't believe I still watch this stuff. Now, the reason I do is because I'm not going to let it beat me. But my God... WWE just seems to be throwing a bunch of shit at the wall, and all that's sticking is shit. Now, they have a few good things going on, and Raw isn't the worst it's ever been, but it's pretty goddamn low. And there are certain things I did not like. Can you guess what I didn't like? Maybe it has something to do with the group that calls themselves Retribution, but let's find out. So, Orton... Uh, sits in a chair and talks about all the stuff that we saw, you know, what happened in the emergency medical wagon match. Shout out to Catwoman underscore 13 for that, you know, aka the ambulance match. Uh, that's a much better way to describe it. Vince McMahon should have called it the emergency medical wagon match. So anyway, he, le he wanted all four men to feel every inch of the pain he felt. Have fun unseeing that. And then we see footage of, you know, him beating up all of them, or we see clips, you know, like, you know, still, oh, no, everybody's down, all this. And he wants a match at Hell in a Cell, and says that, you know, Drew will, Drew basically can cement his legacy by facing Orton inside Hell in a Cell. Okay, cool. All right. Drew then, by the way, waits this whole time outside the room, and then comes in, hi, Orton, I'm going to come beat you up. And then he does that, and then he just beats him up in security. They just happened to be outside the room also, just waited to pile in and did this, and this was stupid. Now, the Drew-Orton feud should have ended before now. It, it really fucking should have. I mean, I get why it didn't. I do get it. Like, they're trying to just stretch this out and hopefully give Drew a big, big win inside Hell in a Cell. I personally think Orton's going to beat him, and then it's really going to get bad. But... You know, they're they're trying, but I think this feud has gone on way too long, in my personal opinion. So, <clears throat> the first match is Zelina, Natty, and Lana versus Asuka, Mandy, and Dana. Now, I want to say something right now. I like a few of these women. Um, Dana does her best. She's still not great. Lana, I think Lana's character jumped the shark a while ago, and I think she's regretting that five-year deal. Outside of the money, they are just fucking squashing her, burying her, destroying her. She's not good in the ring, and she's not good on the mic anymore. Her character means absolutely nothing. But they have beaten the shit out of her every single goddamn week for, like, the last month plus. Um, this was not good. Lana got, you know, hit in the face with a knee from Mandy. One, two, three. And then, Nia and Shayna, who have a tag team title match a little bit later... Come out, and they just lay out Lana again. Uh, you know, Samoan drop through the announcer's table. Thanks for coming, Lana. Look, just, just, if you don't want to have her sign for five more years, WWE, just release her. Just release her. Have her go be with Miro. I mean, honestly, don't punish her for the fact that you signed her to a five-year deal. You're the fucking company that offered her that. I can't believe I'm defending Lana. Like, I don't hate the person. I just, I, I don't think she has any value as a wrestler. But at this point, this is just mean-spirited. Like, it's just fucking ridiculous. It's not helping Natty, either. And Mandy getting a win, um, you know, by beating Lana, that doesn't help Mandy at all. Nobody benefited from this. And then Naya, I'm amazed, I'm amazed Naya did not botch that Samoan drop through the announcer's table. I just don't fucking get it. So, anyway, we then get something that I'm going to probably get some hate for, and I don't fucking care. We get a Trump ad where some lady is talking about she doesn't want the future of her children left in the hands of Biden. Oh, so you want to leave it in the hands of a guy that said he would fuck his own daughter if she wasn't his daughter. And all the pictures, and all the stuff and everything. There are plenty of creeps on every side of the goddamn fence and in the center. Let me tell you that right now, motherfuckers. But if you think that leaving your future in the hands of a guy that said he would fuck his own daughter, you're fucking idiots. And you can get the fuck off my channel, I don't care. You can have free speech, you can say whatever the fuck you want, and I'll ban every single one of you motherfuckers because I'm tired of you dumb shits. I don't fucking care anymore. I don't care if I lose subscribers because of this, because I'm going to speak my goddamn mind. It's fucking horseshit that this kind of stuff keeps happening. Hopefully the country can come back and be a little bit more whole, but I don't know if it can anymore because we have monumentally stupid people not wearing masks and not doing a whole bunch of other shit because they think this orange fucking moron actually can run things good. So you're fucking idiots, you're just as bad as he is, and fuck every single one of y'all. Seriously, fuck every single one of y'all.
So anyway, let's get back to the goddamn review, provided that I still have any viewers left. So, we think of truth, uh, talking to little Jimmy about being drafted to SmackDown, possibly, with a mock draft. And then there's a janitor. He says, oh no, Randy Orton, you're not going to get me. It's Drew Gulak, and Truth slips on a mop bucket. It's like on a banana peel, and then gets pinned. This 24-7 shit will not fucking die, and I can't fucking believe it. So, we then get a... <laughs> this 24-7 stuff is so goddamn bad. So fucking bad. We then get recaps of the Murphy Aaliyah stuff. Okay, let me just say it right now. Maybe I went a bit too far with how I ranted about this with the whole text messages the messaging, you know, DMs and stuff like that. I still stand by every single thing I say that I don't like this story. Like, because I don't think it needed to go to this extent. I get that they're trying to get it where Murphy is going to, you know, it's like Murphy needed to turn on Rawls. I'll get to that here in a little bit. I, I just don't think they needed to go this direction with it because nobody seems comfortable with it. If everybody's on board, that's just totally fucking fine. And I'd say the same thing if you reverse the ages. Yes, they're contained adults. It just doesn't sit right with me. It ain't the worst thing that WWE's doing to me. They still have Velveteen Dream fucking employed, for fuck's sake. Check out my TakeOver review if you want to hear that. So anyway, we get Humberto and Dominic versus Rollins and Murphy. After, Murphy wants Seth to apologize, but not to him, to Aaliyah. And then we do the whole thing like Homer doing the Australia, America, Australia, America thing. Disciple, Messiah, Disciple, Messiah. You know, great taste, less filling, Lincoln, Douglas. You know, the whole thing is, like, if you've seen that uh, MST episode, Racket Girls, you know what I'm fucking talking about. Whew! Yeah, that, that got a little bit annoying. Like, I give Rollins credit for doing the best he can with this heel character. In some weeks, he knocks it out of the park. Other times, I just feel like it's like, eh. It's just, eh. <clears throat> and this was, eh. And then we have the match, and he keeps saying, I don't need your help, Murphy. I don't need your help. Well, Murphy gets the pin with a knee strike to Humberto. Remember when Humberto seemed like he had a bright future and now he's just taking a bunch of pins? I'm not saying that the guy ever would have been like more in the mid-card champion, but goddamn, they're going to have to rebuild this guy. Send him to NXT, have him do something. So, um, anyway, yeah, it was what it was. Murphy walks off because we're going to get the final blow-off of this, or at least the crescendo to blowing off the feud at Hell in a Cell, possibly. So, no Raw Underground again. Hooray! Don't bring back Raw Underground. It was fucking bullshit. Uh, Adam Pearce says to Braun, well, you're not a Raw superstar yet, but you can have an exhibition, unsanctioned. And then Keith Lee says, yeah, sign me up. I mean, after Braun had walked off. And then Murphy uh, is mad at Rollins. Rollins says, I apologize for nothing. Great hedonism bot impression there. And he says, you have until, the, uh, until 10 p.m. to find me and apologize or there will be hell to pay. Okay, apparently one of them has a hairpiece. Wait, that's hell to pay. So we get KO uh, with a, you know, with the KO show uh, with Bray Wyatt. He, ta he talks about when the fiend touches you, you change. Alexa was right. And he says, man, it, it was weird feeling the uh, fiend, you know, reach, uh, you know, go down my throat. That isn't how he said it, uh, or that isn't what he said, but it's how he said it. That's how I'm going to interpret it because I'm, you know, a mature individual. And... Yeah, fun out spray. It's all to set up a match that Owens is going to have with The Fiend. I think we're getting Owens on SmackDown. I think that's pretty obvious. And he says, if you won't come to me, then I'll come to you. And then Aleister Black just attacks him. Black unloads on Owens was an actual quote. And I reacted to that with the good taste of maturity you would come to expect from me. So, McIntyre interview basically boils down to he accepts Randy Orton's challenge. So, moving on. Braun versus Keith. It's an, ex it's an exhibition match. So it's not sanctioned, but there's a referee there, and they do a count out. I would like somebody to explain how that works. Just have them brawl backstage, and then have security break it up. That's all you fucking had to do. Just have that happen. Because otherwise, you just are fucking, you know, you know, destroying the whole unsanctioned thing. It's stupid. You already had unsanctioned matches before. Just, God. I mean, it was what it was. Just a tease possible feud with these guys, because Braun is coming to uh, Raw. It'll be, you know, uh, Brawnderground, if you will, but just, uh, we, we get, you know, uh, you know, the bash through the barricade, and then we get a spot where they go through a crash pad on the ramp, or, you know, on the, off the stage. Who the fuck cares? Bianca's playing 21 questions with, you know, a bunch of people, and I don't know who the fuck they were. I don't have a clue. It's Mr. Perfect like vignettes to hype Bianca. Cool. I'm fine with it. Then we get Truth, Gulak, and Tozawa in the bin. Fitting, because that's where all their characters are. 
Then we get off-screen pan and Truth wins the title. Does anybody care? I don't. Do you? So, MVP then talks about Retribution. Thanks, MVP. I was hoping we forgot that group. I was really hoping that the group that calls themselves Retribution was done. So, Ricochet says the word pass, or Ricochet today, that is, because he's always chasing a victory. You know, he says pass about five times. Never let Ricochet or Ricochet Sine near a goddamn mic again. Goddamn. Fucking goddamn. So, yeah, Ricochet, I'm just going to say that. And Apollo with Ali versus Lashley, Shelton, and MVP. Well, it all kind of blended together. I didn't really care about this because Apollo is involved with the Hurt Business and feuding with them, and I don't care. And the full Lashley gets the victory, and Apollo gets beat. I think Apollo's going to SmackDown. And, cool, that was what it was. It's not the last we'll see of this, though. We get Murphy and Aaliyah. Tommy Wiseau acted better than these two. And I like Murphy. Aaliyah seems very uncomfortable on camera. Also, why was she dressed like she was going to join a convent? Like, like, wh uh, like, whatever. I mean, it just seemed like, okay, are we back in the 1800s? Seriously. It, I don't know. It just seemed, it just seemed weird. It just seemed like, you know, a weird choice. Like, they can't decide one way or the other. It just was a bit of an odd choice. And then Aaliyah's just looking there, very uncomfortable. Again, maybe you shouldn't feature people on TV that are that uncomfortable. I mean, I just, I don't know. It just, why? The Mysterio family thing, it's jumped the goddamn shark. Ray needs to stop bringing his goddamn mother. I know it's his wife, but she looks 20 years older than him. Um, but then, anyway, um, we get Ali challenging MVP tonight. Oh, boy. Rollins calls out Murphy, and he wants an apolo apology. Apologize. Disciple, Messiah, Disciple, Messiah, Australia, America. Um, Murphy then attacks. He's had enough. He canes him, or hits him with a kendo stick, a lot. Rollins finally apologizes. He apologizes to Aaliyah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to involve her and everything. And then he goes right for uh, Murphy's eyes, getting him right in the eye, then attacks him. Um, and then Aaliyah stops it. And then Dominic's wondering what the fuck's going on, even though it's been going on the last few weeks. And then Ray's out there, and, uh, you know, the grandmother's all confused and everything. Why is she there? Just don't have her there. Leave her home. It just seems like if you're not going to have people that are kind of somewhat dynamic characters, just leave them home. Just seriously. Y you can only do so much with a family, especially of non-performers, and, like, only two of them are performers, and yes, I will call Dominic a performer, because he's exceeded my expectations and has done better than I ever thought. I don't know, I just, I, I'm glad that they're doing this thing where they got Murphy away from Rollins, and they're going to feud and everything, and they'll feud the Hell in a Cell, and maybe they'll feud again at Survivor Series, or they'll feud as part of a five-on-five -five team thing, and we'll get, um, you know, maybe a blow-off at TLC, a TLC match, and Murphy wins. I'm not sure. I give it a month before they give up on Murphy. Which is a shame because Murphy is very good. It just feels like they were building this and then they stopped for a few months and then they suddenly just say, fuck, we need to do this. Let's just go fucking do it. Okay, Ruby and Liv versus Shayna and Nia, women's tag team championship match. So that was okay. Nia's not very good. Nia's fucking rotten. Shayna at least can actually do some good shit in the ring. Ruby is good, especially after coming back from double shoulder surgery. And Liv has improved. Um, so three out of four weren't bad, and Liv, Liv has to, uh, the line was, Liv forced to watch uh, as Ruby submits, right in front of her. Um, that sounds like fan fiction. So Shayna basically taps out Ruby. Now, I would understand this if maybe they had a match at the Clash, and then they had a, re they cheated, and then they had a rematch here, and they cheated, and then you got a match at Hell in a Cell where Ruby and Liv win. Since Ruby just lost straight up, though, Yes, Liv stopped um, Shayna from violently scissoring her uh, partner. Have fun in seeing that. Or have fun seeing that. I don't think shame. And she, you know, and Liv did stop her. And yeah, okay, we're probably going to get a rematch at Hell in a Cell. Here's the thing, though. They got beat straight up. So what are they going to do? They got, like, they're going to have one-on-one -on -one match. And, like, Nia's going to get beat by Liv. And then they earn another shot. I, I mean, it just seems kind of ass backwards. We know what the end game is with Shayna and Nia. We know that... Shayna and I are going to feud. It just it just seems like you could do so much better than this. It just really... I, I don't know. just seems like they should switch the titles here. So anyway, we then get the Prophets talking about Grind Flu. Whatever the fuck that is. I don't know what the fuck they're on about anymore. I don't mind the Street Prophets. But goddamn. Goddamn they can be annoying on promos. 
And I know they're told to say this kind of stuff because they're good in the ring. They're a very good team. But I also don't care about them as characters. Anyway, Ali versus MVP. Okay, they're having all this hurt businesses out there because Ali said, bring your goons. That right there should have tipped me off they were going to do some bullshit here. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. What happened? Let me see. There, okay, there we go. Oh, prepare me for this bullshit. Okay, so here's Retribution. Ollie goes out to confront T-Bar and Mace. Here's the thing. You cannot have a fearsome group. As much as I shit on the Dark Order, and it is shit, it is an absolute shit gimmick and the worst thing going on in AEW, at least they have character names. Character names is sort of work as far as ranking. I mean, it's a dumb thing. It's like a bad version of the Stonecutters. The stone cut order. In fact, I think that's what I'll call them from now on. At least John Silver, Alex Randis, kind of whatever. The names kind of make sense. T-Bar, Mace, and Slapjack are not names. They're not good names. They are just as bad as T.L. Hopper, The Goon, and stuff like that from the 90s. And these are talented in, well, okay, Shane Thorne, Dio. Dio's not bad. And then Dominic Dijakovic, who is really goddamn good. It's a bad idea. Then... So Retribution's there. Ollie gets in their faces and everything. Gets in T-Bar and Mace's face. And, you know, I don't know where Diddy is. Yes, that kind of Mace. That's what I'm referring to. I think the person who came up with this should have been Mace. Like, you know, taking a Mace from the medieval days and slapping him upside the head. Moving on. He does this and then turns around. Get him. So, Ali has now become the leader of Retribution. Okay, this is what some people have pointed out. They say, well, he got denied all these opportunities. He... Lost the tie, he lost the opportunity that Kofi got due to injury, and he was going to win the championship at Mania. Let me tell you something. There is no goddamn way Vince McMahon would have put the title on Mustafa Ali. And I love Ali. He wasn't going to fucking do it. And then he then went Money in the Bank, and <coughs> Brock stole that. And then they did the hacker thing, and they dropped that. So people are like, well, maybe they'll do something long-term, and they'll reference back all this stuff and everything. You're giving Vince McMahon way too much fucking credit. I don't think Vince McMahon sees enough in Mustafa Ali. I can guarantee you Bruce Pritchard doesn't. Whoever the fuck is booking Raw does not give a damn about Ali. If they gave a damn about Ali, and yeah, they could say, oh, it's part of the story. They forgot about him intentionally until they came up with something for him. Look, I love Ali. But, of course, Vince McMahon, the Trump, you know, the Trump fuck that he is, would turn the Muslim man evil and have him align with a group that is trying to bring down an unjust system. Or an unjust system. Ali could have been their top babyface. Now, I'm not saying Ali can't pull off a heel run. He didn't look like he was really on board with this. He looked like, okay, they're asking me to do this. Here we go. I Do you guys think it's going to work? Let me know in the comments. I think it's fucking desperation. They're like, shit. We totally shit the bed with retribution. Let's turn Ali heel. You know, that guy everybody likes. So anyway... That was fucking stupid. Let's finish up the rest of this. Dolph, Rude, Orton versus the Prophets, and Drew McIntyre. Two girls, choose your own adventure cup, and... Well, Orton... You know what? No. It's actually deserves... Orton hits an RKO and pins Drew. And that's what this show deserves. Of. Not for that ending, whatever. It builds to the story. This deserves... Every... If I had more shit to rip, I'd rip more shit. This is good... Fucking God. God damn this fucking show. I'm going to keep watching. But my God, I'm so glad that New Japan is around. I'm so glad there are certain aspects of AEW. I'm so, I'm so glad that NXT put on at least a decent takeover last night. They are so hit and miss and it is fucking frustrating to me. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.